Hello, everyone. My name is John Boone. I'm the health science librarian here at Brackett Library. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the library, resources we have available, and a few of the databases. To begin with, let's go to the Brackett Library webpage. To get there, just type in library. Spell it right. Harding.edu. This is the library main page. From here, you've got options such as Power Search. Uh, for example, Power Search, yeah, you know, it's basically like a Google search. It's a great way to begin research. You can find information, from journal articles to books, government documents. You can even find some research starters and research topic overviews. Um, like, like I said, similar to a Google search. And another tab that's on the other side here, this is the library catalog. If you're looking for something specifically that we have here at Brackett Library, we click this tab. This is what we have physically and items that we have access to electronically, such as e-journals and um, uh, e-textbooks as well. Uh, so we have all those available there. Another important tab is the About tab. If you click here, you can see our hours of operation is available here. And you can also look at policies, library policies, library staff. You can also look at services, you know, information about borrowing and renewing books. There's information about uh, suggesting a resource, reserving a room upstairs on the second floor for a study room. And under the research tab, with the drop down there, you've got information about research guides as well as schedule a consultation with your librarian. That's me. Now there's a handout that you'll have access to that has my office number as well as my office or my uh, campus email where you can contact me through those two avenues as well as this schedule a consultation. So you would just go here and click and find your librarian right here. Click book now and it'll bring up a uh, schedule of when you could schedule a time to uh, meet with me. So say you wanted to meet at nine in the morning on Friday. So you would click 9 a.m. You'd enter information about your you put your name, first name, last name, email, and then information about what your uh, project is about. And then we would set up a virtual consultation through Google Meets, and then we would meet that way. Let's go back here. Also under research, as I mentioned, we have research guides. These are guides that have been compiled by the Brackett librarians. Each librarian has their own subject specialty area. Mine is health sciences. So under nursing, if you click that, there are 17 guides that have been compiled for the nursing. So, for example, if you have to do a research paper in APA style, we've got that here. If you click on this, it's going to open up to our APA publication manual research guide. So we have teachers that use both sixth and seventh edition of APA. Now I've got it highlighted here. Which, which APA edition do I use, sixth or seventh? Always be sure to check with your professor. He or she will, be will tell you which one they prefer or are requiring for the paper. And then we have resources here in the middle. We've got AP, these resources have both sixth and seventh. Purdue OWL, if you go there, they have they mainly talk about the seventh edition on their main page. However, this is that you can find the equivalent resource for the older APA sixth by clicking there at this link. So we've got that available. We also have a comparison table that shows the differences between the sixth and seventh editions. This section here is just for APA seventh edition resources only. So we have an Excelsior University has an online writing lab as well. 
We've got uh, sample papers. We've got paper format. We've got uh, a paper here that's got different graphics. Just kind of scroll through there. Look at the abstract, the introduction, spacing. All of this is talked about in this example. Further down, APA 6. This is just for 6th edition. We have, again, sample papers, uh, basics about APA 6. There's a blog for APA 6th edition, as well as we have the actual physical manuals. We have the 6th uh, edition and the 7th edition. They are available here in the library. In the library, we also have the Writing Center. The Writing Center, uh, they are doing, in the age of COVID, they're doing virtual consultations as well, similar to our um, to our library uh, individual research consultations. We're doing those virtually. But to access and, and make an appointment here with the Writing Center, you would click this link, which will open up into where you can fill out your email, your password. Basically, you make an account, and then you can schedule a time to um, meet with somebody from the Writing Center. That'll help you with APA style. Uh, even paper mechanics, anything like that that you have issues with, you can talk to them. So let's go back. That's the APA style. Let's go back and take a look at other guides we've got here. We've got one on um, health statistics. This will show we've got health statistics in just about every topic you can imagine. Uh, a lot of the, the main topics here, we've got, for example, heart disease. And this will give you uh, statistical information on how to find out about, like from the American Heart Association, the CDC FAST stats. We've got maps. We, we can go over here and we can look at diabetes. We've got information from the American Diabetes Association, their statistics, Healthy People 2020, U.S. statistics. So. Feel free to check that out. And if you're looking for stats on the health statistics, it's right here on this page. Um, we have several different resources available here. We just want to make it convenient. You can look through there. We've got, um, there's uh, information about uh, nursing research, uh, nursing 412. And this is where I will include my um, handout where I'll put that in there so you can go in here and you could print it out at your convenience if you wanted to or you can always access it in here. Um, got research in the health sciences, we've got search strategies, literature reviews, all this information available here in research guides. But let's go back to the main database page. Some databases we want to look at a little bit in this video. We're going to go into the A to Z database list, which is this button here in the middle of the page. Click on that. You have an alphabetical A to Z listing here. You know the name of the database. Otherwise, you could go up to subject and you could scroll down and find nursing. And there are 34 nursing databases found. Um, some of the big ones uh, that we use very frequently, Sinal Complete. Cochrane Library. Um, I like to use um, <clears throat> Nursing Reference Center Plus right here. And then also PubMed is another great one, which I talk about PubMed and using medical subject headings with PubMed in uh, the second video. Um, let's just look at Nursing Reference Center Plus. Okay, once we pull that up, this is your search box and you know, your search terms here. Over here where it says all areas, and that's the default is always all areas. So it will find pretty much everything. But if you're looking for something specific about say patient education, you want to look at heart disease. So this is all patient education. You've got um, traveling with heart disease, Reducing the risk, and these are all HTML full text. So, um, hopelessness and the heart attack 
Barolo depression and heart disease. Click on that. Like I said, you got an HTML full text. Be like a patient handout. You could print it. You could also go up and change that from patient education to look at continuing education and then hit search. And this is going to look at information. This will give it to you in a PDF full text as far as, uh, for example, you can look at uh, EKG series uh, rhythm strip interpret interpreting. You could look at heart failure and kidney disease. Click the PDF, should open up, and you could again save this or print this. It gives you a basic description. Scroll down, facts and figures, risk factors, signs, symptoms, clinical presentation, assessment, treatment goals, food for thought. What do I need to tell the patient or the patient's family? It's all provided right there. You can even look up. Um, We've looked at diseases, we've looked at continuing ed, patient education. You can look at management, how to manage heart disease. So we could click management, managing heart disease. Uh, this will look at like, okay, healthcare costs for stroke, uh, healthcare costs for dementia, Alzheimer's, so hospice care. That's Nursing Reference Center Plus. It's very good if you're looking for continuing education, patient education, find out information about drugs. You could type in, leave heart disease there. I guess we can find out. There's uh, the Toperol. So I'll talk about a little bit about the beta blocker uh, for heart disease, maybe the high blood pressure. Um, and other uh, items, you'd probably find some cholesterol lowering and. Uh, statins and other information in here, but you could click on it. Like, let's go to Metoprolol and go ahead and click PDF full text. Now we got the PDF full text of Metoprolol and it gives you information, identification, common uses, dosage, administration, uh, red flags, what to tell the patient, just some good general information about the medication. So let's go back to databases. Let's go and take a look at um, Cochrane Library. See if it's going to open. Please. As you're all aware, we've had a lot of internet and database problems uh, that are, have resulted from having internet issues. Um, what we can do here is we will go back and let's try to see if Sanal will open for us here. There we go, we've got Sanal. Okay, so I like Sanal a lot. Sanal has a wonderful uh, assortment of limiters. Limiters basically help you, if you have a topic that's pretty broad, you can limit it down, limit it by years. Most uh, medical information, health information, you'd like to find uh, that within five years for relevancy. Um, you can limit it by, for example, hint, hint, this could be helpful. Um, any author is a nurse. Um, you can limit it by first author is a nurse. We can look at limiting by ge geographic subset, so you can limit it to the United States. Uh, we can limit it by publication type. Do you want it in an item brief? Do you want it uh, uh, book review, clinical trial? We can look and set age ranges. We can go and look at uh, language. Lots of different ways that we can limit it. If you limit things to what's available full text, then you're only going to get what we have here at Bracket Library. It's better to leave it wide open where you'll see things that we don't necessarily have immediately available, but we can get those to you through a little process called Interlibrary Loan. It's very handy. I'm going to show that to you here when we do a search in here in Sanal. So let's, uh, and oh yeah, this is the what we call Boolean operators here, the AND or and not, and I talk about that in my in the second video, but and basically joins terms together. 
and you will find articles that only will have these two terms together in the article. For example, if we wanted to look at um, a type, type 2 diabetes and a diabetic drug, um, metformin, and then we hit search. Okay, we got over 4,000 re returns on that. Okay, but we can also go in and we can limit it to say the last five years. So we'll put 2015 in there. That dropped it down to at least from 4,000 down to you know 1,600. So let's also look at, we'll do academic journals, narrow it down a little more. Let's go in and also limit the language to English. And let's try finding one with a nurse as author, or any author as a nurse. Search. Oh, wow, we dropped it down to just nine articles then. So these would only contain those limits that we put in there, including nurse as an author. So we've got, we've changed the limiter on there for the date. We've uh, used the Boolean and, we've added nurse as author. So PDF full text, that's really simple. So if you wanted this article, you just click PDF full text and it's gonna open it right up. And then you could um, go up here and you could download this, save it to your desktop. You could print it to a printer that your computer's network to. Um, here's one that's uh, retrieve full text. So if you wanted that one, we would click on it. Okay, it's gonna open up from another database, Science Direct. Science Direct is another database we have. It's, it's somewhat, it's not the easiest to search, but if you search Sanal or Cochrane or PubMed and they link out to a full text, odds are they're gonna get it from Science Direct. It's, to me, it's easier to do the search through Sanal or PubMed and let them, uh, let those databases interact with Science Direct and pull up the full text then to specifically go to Science Direct and do your search from there. So there again, you've got it. You can just, and that tells you the journal it's from, the journal for nurse practitioners. You could click PDF and then you're able to download it and print it, save it to your uh, desktop. So then we'll just, uh, we'll get out of this one right there. What if you find one that doesn't have retrieve full text or PDF? Like there's one on this page and I'm thankful for. So I can show you what to do about if you find one, say you really wanted this one. So you click on it, on the title. We don't have it full text and we don't have it from another database, but if you look over here on the left, you've got a request through interlibrary loan. You can click that. And Theoretically, it's going to ask you if you're signed into Pipeline. And if you're signed into Pipeline, then it will pull up a form that's gonna be automatically populated. So I wanna refresh that and try it again. Let's see what will happen here. But anyway, it will pull up a form that's automatically populated with all the information from the journal. It'll have the title, volume number and everything. And then you will scroll down to the bottom of that form and then just click in what your status is. It's a drop down menu and you'll put on there that you're uh, undergraduate or graduate. And then you'll uh, put down what department you're from nursing. And then you would just click submit. Then you're gonna get an email saying you've requested this from the library that we're gonna send out and try to get it for you. 
And then probably within 48 hours, you will get another email that will say, give you a link of, of your journal. And from that link, you'll be able to click and go to the full text of your journal. And, uh, but you only have 30 days to view it or five views. So what I would do is just click view and see the PDF. And then I would just automatically just go ahead and download it right then. Save it to your desktop then you've got it. So if a month from now you're realizing, I've got that research paper to do. Oh yeah, I've got some of those articles I requested. Oh, I can't get them anymore because they've timed out. Well, this way you've got it saved and you don't have to worry about it. And uh, I'm not uh, advocating procrastination here. I'm just saying, save it, have it now. And then you don't have to worry about going back and going back and uh, it not being there. I'll just give this another try. There we go. Here we go. Sorry about the technical difficulties. You just click login. And um, see, this is the, the form I was telling you about. It's all populated. It's got your uh, page numbers, title, author. And you would just click here, you know, undergrad, grad. Or then you would click your department, nursing. And then hit the submit. And then it's ordered and then when it comes in within 48 hours um, you'll have PDF full text access to it. I'm glad that that pulled up. So let's go back. So that's kind of a quick overview of, of Sonal. It's very useful. Remember the limiters, especially the limiters for nurse as author or any author as the nurse. Uh, those are very, very handy. Um, so let's go back to the databases. Go back and look at Cochrane Library. And as my second video was going to talk about with uh, searching in PubMed, if you can search PubMed, PubMed searches Cochrane as well. Cochrane mainly has a lot of, it has reviews, but it also has a lot of uh, clinical trials. That's their specialty, finding uh, clinical information, finding evidence-based clinical trials. I always like to click here on the advanced search. This opens up and whatever, this is your search box here. And then whatever you put in here gets searched automatically. Title, abstract, and keyword is the default. But then you could say search for that only in the abstract or if you know the author's name put it there and then hit author or if you want to look for it at another like in the Cochrane group or something like that or if you know the digital object uh, identifier that's what the DOI is so if you can remember that then you could probably you probably have memorized the VIN number on your on your car as well I mean it's not an easy number to remember uh, so I've already had a search in here at one point for aplastic anemia. It's a uh, disorder where the bone marrow seems to stop uh, producing red blood cells. And so let's go ahead and do a search just just by just with that by itself. And it's giving me the spinning wheel of death. Okay, there we go. All right, it opened up. All righty. So in Cochrane reviews, we've got four reviews here. This review, we could click on it and see the PDF of it. Uh, what's interesting is it's, it's an intervention. It's a review, it's 2015. You can also look and click and see the, the PICO questions that were used here. So let's open it up. Okay. Now we can look at it in PDF view if we want to. But this will give you your background, your abstract objectives, search methods, selection criteria, data collection, main results, plain language summary here. So it's more of a non-scholarly or non-scientific. It's more for the, uh, the lay person to be able to understand. Author's conclusion, the summary of the findings, description of the conditions. I mean, lots of information there. Uh, let's see where we saw the Pico. 
let's go back. I'm not seeing it right offhand here. So let's go back, show Pico. Oh, there's the uh, patient intervention um, comparison and outcomes listed right there. So that's kind of, that's pretty handy. But then also it talks about the trials. Now these are all your clinical trials from, um, with a, involving aplastic anemia. If it opens up, it will have a list of the clinical trials. Uh, there we go, that are being done. And some of them are in what's called Embase. It's a database we do not have at the library. It's uh, very expensive. Um, PubMed is a great database. I, I, I love it just like Sanal. Um, it's free. That's really, that's even better. Free is always the right price. Um, so you could click on any of these, especially let's look at the one up here. It's uh, PubMed because we will have access to that. Because like I said, PubMed searches Cochrane. So, well, it does not have an abstract on this one. It's got information, the original publication, digital object identifier, keywords. Okay, well, that one turned out to be a dud. Scroll down a little bit. Still a serious disease. ATG therapy. Let's see, base. Let's see what it's going to tell us. Okay. Um, ATG therapy and aplastic anemia, uh, current development. My mother had aplastic anemia and she underwent uh, ATG therapy. It deals with the T cells and ATG either comes from horse or rabbit serum, if I remember right. But anyway, it's an immunosuppressive effect from ATG is what it does. Because uh, when she was receiving blood transfusions and it was trying to, uh, tries, basically tries to shock the body into uh, not attacking its own bone marrow and blood cells. So it's pretty much what aplastic anemia does. More information than you wanted to know. But it gives you the abstract here, some information about it. Um, like I said, most of these are indexed into PubMed. I'm going to show you another source. We'll just go outside here a little bit and I'm going to go to, uh, there we go, clinicaltrials.gov. This also looks at clinical trials, as the name implies. So this is free. It's not, you don't even have to have the database to get into it. You can go in here and, for example, See listed clinical studies relevant or related to the COVID-19. So let's take a look at that. How many studies are there? Well, right now that are registered with clinicaltrials.gov, there are 3,185. Status, these are not yet recruiting. This one is not yet recruiting. This is recruiting, not active. We could scroll on and keep looking at different ones. Some few will say that they're complete. You can even search. You can search by status. You can search by completed, inactive, suspended, terminated. Um, you can go down and search by the eligibility criteria, study type, study results, phase of the study, so phase one, two, three, four. Um, you can also look at this map here. That's kind of cool. This shows where the clinical trials um, of, uh, for COVID are being done. Uh, 1,179 in uh, Europe. Here's the United States. We can click on the United States and we can look by state. Not surprisingly, there's such a huge number in California and New York. Arkansas has got 10, so let's see what's going on in Arkansas with their studies, their clinical trials here. Okay. We've got several, 10. New, that's not yet recruiting. Recruiting, this is ended by, or enrolling by invitation. Recruiting, okay. But if you look at the top one here, it tells you it's recruiting. It tells you the study type, 
uh, inhaled nitrous uh, nitric oxide for the treatment of COVID-19 um, conditions. It's meant to treat intervention and then locations. And this one looks like it's just in Baptist uh, Baptist Health Center Clinical Research, Little Rock, Arkansas. We can click here and look at the actual study. And this will give you information about the study description, conditions it's meant to treat, like we just saw the abbreviated version of that. The study, uh, it's like uh, an estimated enrollment, 20 participants, it's a very small study. Estimated primary completion date looks like September 30th, about a month away. Gives you the arms where you have the experimental and you have the control. Uh, outcome measures, primary, secondary, other outcome measures. Eligibility criteria for the people who are, are going to be the volunteers. Inclusion, exclusion, contacts, locations. Well, this one's just in Baptist. Sometimes you'll see 10 locations. Sometimes you'll see 30 locations, and that's just locations of different clinical uh, facilities across the United States or whatever country they could be in. And this one is just a small study being done here at Baptist. It's only 20 people it's just here. And then there's who's funding it, so the sponsors of it. And um, even more information is provided there. Mesh terms, which are in PubMed, you'll see mesh terms in there. But it's always interesting to look at see who, um, sorry, to see who uh, sponsored the study. Because, for example, I mean, it would be like looking in, at a study that tries to say that nicotine is a uh, is not a uh, carcinogenic chemical and it's not addicting. And you're thinking, wow, that's interesting. It goes against everything I've ever heard. And then you, well, well, who's paying for the study? And you find out the study is being funded by Philip Morris, who's a, that's a cigarette company, by the way. Um, there's your smoking gun, and pun intended there. But so it was good to look and see you know, who's funding various studies. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you a little bit about that was uh, not uh, in the Harding database, but clinicaltrials.gov. It's associated with the National Institutes of Health which is connected with PubMed as well. It's a very good source. It's outside the databases that we have, but it's free. And it's, uh, you can search, if I go back, sorry, if I go back to the uh, main page, you can go in and search as well. It's searchable, fully searchable. Look, you can search for conditions or disease. If you know the, uh, a lot of times if you find a study that's in a, in PubMed or something, it'll give you the NCT number, which is uh, the National Clinical Trial number. And then you could take that number, plug it into here, and search. And once you search it, you can find the exact study and you'll be able to find more information than what you can from a review of the study, for example. And you can limit it by country. So um, that's clinicaltrials.gov. So there's kind of an overview of introduction to the library. A little bit of information about our research guides, how you can contact me, information about um, uh, Nursing Reference Center Plus, Sanal Complete, a um, little bit of Cochrane Library, and also clinicaltrials.gov. I have another video that we go into a little more depth. We look at the PubMed and the MeSH headings and how to use MeSH to search. Um, so I guess I'll See you in the next video, and I hope things go well for you this semester. Stay safe. Um, it's a very, very interesting times that we live in right now. So, but just good luck with everything this semester. And like I said, stay safe, and we will see you again.